Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this VR mashup, where I will be covering a few different themes that I've been seeing on Tarot Tube. So, for one, I caught a kind of vampire focused video from Meg over at Rose Honey Ritual, and I believe Tarot Geek also did one as part of her kind of collection series. So I will uh, link those, of course. And I mean, how could I not do my own video on some of my uh, vampire themed decks, which a lot of these will echo the ones that Tarot Geek and Meg talk about in their videos. And I don't care because they are the ones that I have. They're the ones that I love and will be using uh, for the spooky time of year, which is another kind of theme that I've been seeing, you know, hashtag spooky decks, Halloween theme decks. So of course, for me, even though I can do vampire decks all year round and spooky decks even, but, you know, especially for this particular time of year, uh, vampires and those uh, themed decks really uh, fall into the subset of you know, what I would call like spooky theme decks. So we'll be hitting some of those with other decks that I have. And then just in general, fall decks, which for me, I would say that the ones that I'm going to show you in this video, and of course it does not make up the entirety of the uh, kind of decks that fall into these themes. Um, I, we would be here all day, but, but it, it's a good chunk. And these are all decks that I don't, intend to stop using after, you know, spooky season is over, after the fall is over. These decks usually will carry me through the winter time as well. So I can't guarantee how super organized this is going to be, but hopefully, you know, you can figure it out. You're picking up what I'm putting down, like what categorizes as vampire slash spooky slash, you know, fall. Uh, I just think that because they overlap, for me, I thought I would just go ahead and, and do a mashup here. So I'm going to try to put the vampire decks up front as much as possible. And the two that I'm gonna start off with are actually ones that I have been using paired together this week. And that is the Darkwood Tarot and the Horror Tarot, both by illustrator Abigail Larson. And all the characters in both these decks are not vampires, but uh, several of, of them are. So I would say that these would qualify as vampire decks as well as, you know, spooky decks. They definitely give Halloween and spooky for me. And some of you will already know how much I really enjoy the Darkwood Tarot. The Horror Tarot was a thoughtful gift and I wasn't sure about it at first, uh, but I have been finding that uh, it's been growing on me. It's definitely been growing on me. And I think these two speak very well together to each other. And I did use the Horror Tarot in a haunted house spread that Rumor Haven created. And she has a video of that up on her channel. I will link that. But I just recently did that using the Horror Tarot because that's the deck that she also used when doing a sample reading of that spread. And it it was a, a very <laughs> a very insightful reading. Let's just put it that way. So, you know, this card now gives me um, Revenant vibes. I don't know if any of you have seen the K-drama. It's a paranormal drama called Revenant, but this, this right here <laughs> is Revenant all day for me. So the next two I'm going to show, and I didn't realize I'd be doing these in pairs until just now, but why not? I think that'll maybe save some time. These are also what I would kind of classify as, well, definitely this one right here 
This is uh, the Vampire's Tarot of the Eternal Night. And then this one is the Tarot de la Nuit. And this one, you know, I can use all, all seasons of the year. In fact, both of them. In fact, any and all of them, really. But um, these, <laughs> some of these characters are vampires and as are all the characters in this deck, Obvi. And uh, I enjoy both of them. They are, they just feel very kind of, well, especially, you know, the, the Vampire's Tarot feels just very kind of nostalgic of, you know, older fantasy kind of images that I would see growing up. And then this is, you know, Tarot de, de la Nuit, I have said many times, is my, my fantasy cosplay deck. And actually, since I'm seeing them together, I kind of am not mad at this pairing. So this might be a pairing that I will try. I actually think they look pretty decent together. So here we have a vampire slayer. <laughs> like the, the facial expressions are just, are gold in the vampire's tarot. Now this is an out of print deck, just FYI. And here's another, <laughs> Let's compare vampires. Um, so you can see the blood trickling down his face, which is, I suppose, supposed to be sexy, but it's not. It's just, it's hilarious to me. And I still love it. So I think that both decks are actually quite pretty, you know? And also can be campy and OTT uh, in the best way possible. These next two decks I have definitely used in pairs although not always, and definitely the tarot has some vampires in there, and I, I think that uh, JBG, or rather Jasmine Beckett Griffith, her artwork is definitely uh, spooky vibes sometimes for some people, uh, and these are two decks that actually I created myself using her public domain art, a lot of these, these images you will have seen in her mass market decks that she created along with uh, Lucy Cavendish. So this is the Notorious JBG Mini, and this is the JBG Oracle. And I did modify this to take off the borders, did trim the borders, and then I regretted that I trimmed the borders because I missed them. Which is not to say that this looks bad. I think it looks fine. And... Uh, I'm not mad at it, and it makes the mini deck even minier, uh, which is cute. But I do also now have another copy of the tarot with the borders intact. So these are definitely two that I use all year round and they feel especially apropos for this time of year. So this next deck I'm going to show I would definitely classify as more fall because of just the colors and also vampire. Like this does give me vampire and that is the Fenestra Tarot. I mean, come on. Don't they look like vampires? They're all like pale and bloodless and I mean, I don't know. I just get vampire <laughs> from the way these characters are draw drawn. And so they just have a very eccentric look to them. But yeah, this is a deck that I don't see around a lot, maybe because the characters look a little bit eccentric, but um, I really enjoy this deck. 
This next deck definitely gives autumn. It is one that I've talked about before and one that I used quite a lot last month, and that is the Llewellyn Tarot. And I have gone and modified this deck, edged it, chopped off the borders, and as you can see by the colors, they feel very autumnal. And I've just always loved this art. And this deck, as some of you might already know, is very sentimental because this is the deck that I use to really uh, dive back into tarot and learn it in earnest. So this is always going to be just kind of one of my top favorite decks in that it is just so lovely to read with. It's so lovely to look at and I think it is a great deck to learn tarot with if you are not into the traditional pixie imagery. These next two decks I'm going to show together because I talked about them in our most recent Three Girls One Deck episode on spooky decks. And so if you want to hear more about them, you can certainly hop on over to that video once this one is done. But we have the Raven's Prophecy Tarot and the Tarot of the Sweet Twilight, both modified. I can see why some people would think that the <laughs> Sweet Twilight it can be a little eerie. And um, like Heather said, it does give Tim Burton. And then if you know me at all, you know my feelings about the Raven's Prophecy Tarot and how much I fucking love this deck. And actually, as I'm looking at them together, I think that this doesn't look so bad in terms of like a pairing. Hmm. Okay, so I can't have a video like this and not include my beloved Everyday Witch Tarot. I mean, this, as you know, if you've been on my channel, uh, I use this year round. Although I haven't used it all that much this year, just because, I mean, so many decks, so little time. Uh, but while this isn't what I would call spooky, it certainly lends to Halloween because of the whole witch theme. So this is a good deck for kind of playing into that fun vibe of Halloween. But for me, it really is a, an all year round kind of deck. I love this tower card. This is probably one of my favorite tower cards, along with the one in Tarot of the Sweet Twilight. And how can you not love all the cats? This next deck, while some people might argue with me, <laughs> I think this makes for a great Halloween deck. And that is the Squid Cake Marseille Tarot. Now hear me out zombies. These characters are zombies. Whenever I see images, that's what I think. I have not used this deck yet, but I definitely plan to, uh, especially around this time of year because I just can't help think, yeah, zombies. Uh, and even though it is very pink and pastel and it's not spooky, more like spoopy, I, that is the immediate association that I always get. Just trying to skip some of the pips here. So yeah, I kind of feel like, you know, there are zombie decks out there and I've certainly been, you know, low key tempted, although zombies aren't usually my thing. I'm a vampire gal through and through. Uh, I just feel like now with this deck, I already have ticked off the zombie tarot box because, yeah, 
these to me are giving zombies. So this is what I consider to be my zombie deck. The next deck is the Nicoletta Ciccoli Tarot Mini. Another deck that I haven't had a chance to use yet, but I am very excited to. Um, this was a, a gift and so freaking cute. Oh my God, I love minis. Love them so much. And so I know that people do use this deck year round. Uh, and I think that uh, this makes for, you know, especially images like that, I think it makes for, it gives uh, some people anyway, kind of spooky vibes, Halloween vibes. Uh, I know that this is a popular deck for kind of like shadow work, unpacking inner child uh, narratives and such. I don't intend to use this deck that way. Um, like I said, and have said numerous times before, I mean, sh shadow work and th that kind of darker exploration that just comes when it comes. Um, and it's not necessarily for me like a dedicated time I set aside, like, oh, today I'm going to do some shadow work. Like that's just, that's just not how I personally, you know, explore uh, those types of questions. Um, which is, you know, again, no shade if, if that is something that you do. That's just not what I do. That's a beautiful card. These two decks that I'm going to show are by the same artist, Adam Oler. This is the Soul Cats Tarot. And then also we have the Thistledown Oracle, which I bought specifically to use with the Soul Cats Tarot. So this is mass market, this is indie, but by the same artist, Adam Oler. And so I'll be curious to see how these two work together. I mean, just visually, they look fantastic paired. Um, but I know that a lot of people choose to pair, pair the thistle down with the oh god smoke ash and thor smoke ash and ember and oak ash and wait oak ash and thorn <laughs> you know which decks i'm talking about uh so i don't see a lot of soul cats very much soul cats doesn't get a lot of love Oh, but I do like these two together. I think these two look really nice. So I, yeah, I'm excited to work with these two as a pair. Very autumnal. Next deck is definitely what I would classify as spooky. I mean, I think a lot of people would classify this as like a spooky kind of Halloween deck. And that is the Murder of Crows Tarot. This is mass market. I went ahead and modified this deck to give it um, the red edging and the uh, red pops of color in the images. So I know that people find this like creepy and spooky and certainly like, you know, images like this, like the expression of the sky, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and I think because there are a lot of like plague doctor masks that adds to it for some people uh, but for me actually the plague doctor masks don't I just don't see them that way um I because you know the plague doctor mask came in obviously during the plague when it was you know by design and origin was meant to be used as protection for the doctors and then, of course, it developed this very negative connotation with the kind of quacks who were taking advantage, taking advantage of the, the um, ill people and the poor um, during the plague. Uh, but if, if you're looking at it from kind of the, the original intent of the mask as a form of protection that lends an interesting perspective to how we can read some of these, these images. 
and how that works in some of the spreads or readings that you do. But I mean, again, like, I'm, I'm not saying that, <laughs> that this deck is just all, um, I, I understand that there are some kind of confronting images for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I just really enjoy this deck. So, and I think the crows are just really beautiful. And, you know, even though it can be read, you know, just seeing the crows along with the characters, it can be read in an ominous way. I kind of see it as also um, just a sense of like kinship and, and again, community and, you know, uh, bringing forth of messages, uh, bringing forth of, again, protection and knowledge. The Hush Tarot, another deck that feels autumnal to me. It can also feel, though, very kind of summery in terms of like, <laughs> this sounds terrible, but in terms of just like the sweltering heat that then results in kind of like um, decay and rot. Uh, but I, I don't think that all the images certainly lend to that. And again, with um, just some of the nature vibes and some of the colors, we we do get a feeling of autumn. And this is a deck that I have modified. I have uh, reorganized the sequencing so that it resonates with me more. So for instance, this is not originally the Hermit card if you were to buy this deck, but it is my Hermit card after doing just kind of a, yeah, a modification, a reimagining of these cards. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily an everyday deck for me. So I don't intend to necessarily like pull it out for daily draws. Um, or maybe I could try, I don't know. I feel like I tried that before and it, it didn't really speak to me in that way, but we'll see. We'll see what I'm in the mood to do this time around. But I do find the art to be very lovely. The final few decks I'm gonna show are actually Lenormand decks. Uh, these are ones that I have either recently been using or will or do plan to use in the upcoming months. So the first one is the Black Salt Lenormand by Logan of Larkin Legend. And I feel like, I think it's just because it's, you know, black. So the kind of darker color um, lends more to my wanting to use this in the fall and winter months, as opposed to his pink sugar Lenormand, which is more for me spring summer. So I did do a review of this deck. You can find that on my channel. But it is a lovely deck. Really, I'm really all about the hollow against the black. Just really well done. Now this is one that I just recently received for the purposes of review and also um, the upcoming Kickstarter. Uh, I think that is slated for the beginning of 2024. So this is the Brown Witch Lenny, a cheeky BIPOC Halloween Witch Lenormand deck by Auntie K. Now I'm just, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because this is a prototype. And since my receiving this deck, uh, there have already been like edits and corrections made, but just to give you an idea, uh, because yeah, I, I want to be upfront and transparent about the fact that this is a deck that I will have to, uh, or not have to, but plan to be working with in the next month or so. And this is uh, definitely more modern than I usually go for. And as, as far as Lenny's go, this is people-based. It is very people-focused, which is very new to me as well in terms of Lenormand. So we do see how um, this kind of 
break some rules. And so the question will be, how well will I do with those <laughs> said broken rules and how, how well that would read for me as a Lenore Mon reader? Because it is definitely different strokes for different folks. And um, I am up for the challenge for sure. So stay tuned where you will get my honest review on how well that works for me. Okay, and then final one, this is actually my deck that I created, and this is called the Spoopy Lenormand. So not quite spooky, but you know, spoopy, hence the name. I had a fun time creating this deck, and I just, yeah, I love how fun it feels and just how cute. So, I definitely plan on using this even after Halloween has passed. I I do pull out this deck. So I just think it's a good time. And obviously it reads so well for me because I made it. Oh, okay, I lied. I, I missed one. And um, this is definitely one that is kind of spoopy. This is the Calilly Tarot. It is out of print. Um, oh my, I love this deck so much. It is totally up my street. My cup of tea in terms of just like colors, in terms of these like big headed characters. Um, yeah, I come on. Like, does this not scream Julie? It sure does. So I'm glad that I was able to uh, snatch up a copy. It is a very, you know, kind of, Clone, I guess, uh, you know, Rider Waite, Rider Waite sister from a different mister for the most part. Um, yeah. So this to me does give kind of, I wouldn't say creepy. Maybe some people would say that. I don't think necessarily creepy, but definitely like Halloween, definitely fall. Um, well, actually, you know, I have used this because you have some pastels mixed in there. I have definitely used this at different times of the year. But I do think that this does lend very well to the spooky season. So that is the Callalulu Tarot. Okay, now I'm done. So hopefully you enjoyed. And if you've stuck around with me for this whole time, thank you so much. Until the next video, hope you all are well. Much love and take care.